What is going on everybody? My name is Nico and welcome back to another Pokemon video. We're doing another tier list today because actually the other day we did the starters. We ranked every starter, first evolution starter, and it was a lot of fun. And some people even said in the comments that they wanted to see more videos like this. Plus, I'm just trying to find stuff to cover the time until Series 8 comes out. I don't really feel like posting a whole lot more battles in the Series 7 format. I have been working on teams and stuff for Series 8 and my teams are going to start coming up on the channel. But this is just kind of a fun little side thing to do in regards to Pokemon. And I feel like I'm going to get a lot of crap for this one. So we're going to do every mainline game. We're going to rank it. And then we're going to do another tier list later this week. We're going to do the middle evolutions for all the starters as well. This is going to be a lot of fun. So if you are not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos go up here on the channel. But let's get into this tier list all right so here we are we got our tier list here and i've organized them already they're not in order of release but they're organized with the games they that they should be with so it's just i i know i'm gonna get a lot of crap for this because i am going to rate them not based on you know like when they came out how good they were but like by today's standards do they still hold up and I think that's going to change where a lot of these games go. Plus, I just don't feel that some of the games that some people love deserve the spots or the praise that they get. So we're going to do all that. It's going to be interesting. We're going to I'm going to go in order. I'm going to try and go in order release. If I screw it up while well, I screw it up, if you disagree, be kind in the comments. Don't don't you can disagree all you want. You can say your opinions. Just don't be rude to others or anybody. I will just automatically boot you from the channel. So let's do this so we're gonna start here we got fire uh we got red blue and yellow fire reds over here excuse me so these games are good don't get me wrong <laughs> we're already starting off these games are good but they're not that special like there's all the gen oneers out there that oh these are the best games you know pokemon went downhill after gen 2 gen 3 blah 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 okay these games are good but they're not that freaking good Okay, they're mediocre games. They definitely don't hold up. Like, if you play a modern Pokemon game, the quality of life stuff is so much better in the newer games. These are acceptable games. I'm going to put them in B simply for nostalgia's sake. These games deserve B because of nostalgia. That's really the only reason I decided to put them there is because I enjoy them. They're just not that great nowadays like they if i i have them on my 3ds here my 3ds is right here i have them i play them they're they just don't hold up now i will say if you play them you know with a a speed up thing they're way better they're way better if you're able to speed them up they're just so mind-numbingly slow so moving on we've got silver golden crystal I'm going to go with silver. I love these games. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love gold and silver. I think they're dramatically better than the original games. Crystal, I'm going to put an A because I just like crystal. But they're still, I would say gold and silver were improvements, but they weren't drastic improvements over what. They just kind of, you know, did a new region, new stuff. But they're great because you have the additional region. You can go back to Kanto. That's really cool. But I think Crystal just does it all better. So Crystal definitely goes up on the list. I didn't put Yellow at an A tier just because Yellow... I, I feel like Yellow is more of a fan service to like the anime fans that wanted to have Pikachu follow you around. I do like the idea of Pokemon following you around. And you'll see that later on in this uh, video. But I just couldn't bring myself to put it up any higher on the list. So moving on from there, we have... Where are they at? Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Now... This is going to be a hot take. I am not the biggest fan of these games. I am really not the biggest fan of the... They're good. They're, they're good Pokemon games. Don't get me wrong. But they're just not my favorites. Like, they just... I don't know. There's something about Gen 3 that just never really clicked with me. So, for me, these are C. They're not bad. They're just not my favorites. Uh, from there, we go to Fire Red and we go to Leaf Green. Again, I, this is like... The third time we'd gone to Kanto, I think they're better than the originals. But after being there, you know, in uh, red and blue and yellow, and then going back in uh, gold, silver, it just it gets old. Okay, you get tired of Gen One. After that, we got diamond, pearl, and platinum. Very easily for me, 
This was my first Pokemon game, so I understand I'm biased. Platinum is an S game because it's just way better than these. The only issue I have with these games is the fact that the health bars drop too damn slow. That's it. That's all I have is that when you knock out a Pokemon, a one hit KO it takes about five freaking seconds for that health bar to deplete. So that's just annoying. But other than that, these games hold a very special spot in my heart. And I am very much looking forward to Gen 4 remakes this year. Uh, after Gen 4, we had Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Literally, some of my favorite Pokemon games ever. So freaking good. They they took what was awesome about Gen 4 and they took us back to Johto, which was awesome. Because at the time, I had yet to go back and play Gold and Silver. Because I started in Gen 4, I had yet to go back and actually play Gold and Silver. Uh, as their own standalone game so going back and experiencing gold and silver this way with you know the pokemon following you and it was just a fantastic experience i really really love those games plus the poke walker accessory was super cool still is super cool it was like the first iteration of pokemon go so those games are just freaking awesome next black and white s tier i don't i don't i mean people may not agree with me here it's easily it is a soft reboot of the pokemon series the story was phenomenal 151 150 new pokemon that is freaking amazing they were fantastic i loved the fact that we went to a new region there was no repeating pokemon from previous generations until after you beat the game that was what was up it was a whole new experience like yeah diamond of pearl they had a bunch of repeats everything had a bunch of repeats you get to black and white it's fresh slate that was freaking awesome. And like I said, the story was phenomenal. Now, Black and White 2, I also enjoyed quite a bit. I was a big fan of Black and White 2. However, uh, I, I just, uh, I like Black and White 2, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if they're quite on the same level that uh, Black and White 1 were on. I enjoyed them. They just weren't quite as good, in my opinion. Uh, moving on, X and Y. These games... Don't get me wrong, they were innovative. They were super innovative. They, you know, it was the first game on the 3DS. You know, you got to see, you could move in a diagonal direction. Everybody blew up. You could actually move diagonally. It was crazy. It was like a meme at the time. It was a super big release. And I really enjoyed these games, but they just aren't great. Like, there's some really cool Pokemon that come out of Gen 6. But they're by the standards of Pokemon, these aren't great games. Um, for me, I think they're probably B. I think they're definitely a B tier game. They are, I really enjoy them, but they don't hold up against a bunch of other of the releases. Now, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, I feel definitely deserve the A tier category. I know I said I'm not a fan of Gen 3. However, these were fantastic remakes. They were, they took upon... They took what X and Y iterated on with the 3DS, and they just made it so much better in these games. They were smooth. It was, it was just a clean game. I remember playing them and just adoring these remakes. So they are going in my A category. I really, really enjoy those remakes a lot. Um, Sun and Moon. A. Some people may disagree with me. I thought the story in Sun and Moon, although it was very slow and they held your hand the whole time, the first time playing through it, I really, really enjoyed Sun and Moon. It was a good experience. I wouldn't say it's one of the best stories in Pokemon, but the story was acceptable. It was good. I enjoyed it. And they did something different. It wasn't the freaking gym leaders again. The island challenges to me were a lot of fun. They got rid of HMs. You were able to go ahead and use like the riding Pokemon like Tauros, Stoutland, Charizard. That was freaking awesome. So I really, really enjoyed Sun and Moon. However, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon are Cs. They are C's on my list. Why are they C's, you might ask, if I love Sun and Moon so much? Because these games didn't do anything new. Like, I I mean, I understand the point that, you know, Platinum didn't do anything new. Okay, Platinum changed very little about the game, and I put it at an S tier. The problem I have with Sun and Moon, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, is that because of how slow Sun and Moon was, Doing the exact same thing again just to get to the end game where things actually kind of shook up a little bit, it was a drag. I hated playing through Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon again, and it really sucked because I really did enjoy Sun and Moon. I really enjoyed those games, but then having to go back through and do it all over again with the long cutscenes and all the talking and the blah, 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 I, I despised it. 
now let's go i don't know why these are on the list because they're not really mainline games but they're there so we're gonna cover them anyways let's go i enjoy let's go don't get me wrong i think let's go is a fun game in terms of um if we're gonna, gonna count it toward all the mainline games they are easily the weakest i don't like the catchy mechanics leave it for pokemon go i'll i'll enjoy if they do a let's go johto but it's not gonna be my favorite pokemon game by any means like i'll play it and i'll enjoy it but it's not what i want out of a pokemon game so that's why they get d that's that's easily why they get d not to mention this is what the fifth time we'd gone back to kanto i'm i'm tired of kanto i am tired of kanto i don't want to see kanto again until they make a game where we can go to every region that's ever been discovered and then we can catch pokemon and pick wherever we start our journey that's when i want to see kanto again until then keep it out of my games finally and this is the one that's going to get me the most shit guaranteed Sword and Shield are S tier Pokemon games, in my opinion. Now, I'm going to defend my case here on these because I love these games. They are fantastic. Uh, I don't think the story is that great. The story is good. It's just not great. I feel like a lot of the situations in the story were things like, oh, you know, let the adults handle it. You continue on your gym challenge, which was annoying, but it was whatever. The reason I think this game is so good, there were so many iterations. Wild Area is freaking amazing and it's definitely you know people oh the wild area is laggy blah 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 this game was a test run for whatever the next game is going to be the next mainline game that they can really iterate on and really shape how the pokemon games are going to be moving forward especially with the dlcs the dlcs were just more test runs of the wild area experience so i like these games for that that was really cool i loved the wild area when the game came out i did it so many raids i put so much time into these games alone just doing that then you have the addition of the DLCs, which I'm not really worried about too much. The DLCs helped it, but they weren't fantastic. So, you know, I, I like the DLC addition. I like that we didn't just get, you know, Pokemon Gun or something stupid that would just repeat these. But, like, I also enjoyed, and this is going to upset a lot of people as well. There was no national decks. That is freaking awesome. You hear that? Awesome. We don't need a national decks, okay? How many of you are actually bringing along your freaking Pachirisu from Gen 4? Nobody. Nobody's using a Pachirisu, okay? You don't need every freaking Pokemon you've ever caught to be in the game because you're not going to use it. You can only have six Pokemon in your freaking party. Not to mention, as a competitive player, this changes up the metagame. You're actually able to, you know, use Pokemon that you don't have to worry about everything. Pokemon that are less likely to get used are going to have some actual use because you don't have that many to pick from. Like Greedent got use. There was not things like Garchomp swallowing up the metagame in the early eras of uh, Sword and Shield. That was really cool. Not to mention, again, as a competitive player, the quality of life improvements there and the ease of access. I've never played VGC until Sword and Shield, and it was really freaking easy to get into competitive play because of things like the bottle caps the hyper training all that stuff was super super easily accessible in this game and that just makes sword and shield even freaking better and there's a ton of ways to shiny hunt not i know it's not as good as other games okay it, but that doesn't matter to me okay we have dynamax adventures we have eggs masuda method and we have wild encounters the wild encounter method is broken it's my least favorite way of shiny hunting currently but you know it's there so i think as an overall game this game is freaking awesome and i really really like it which is why it's an s tier for me okay i don't care about the freaking tree textures who cares who actually is standing in the wild area going hmm this tree does not look quite right nobody nobody is doing that only people that are doing that are people that like complaining already it's probably already the national dexter national dexters excuse me who are already pissed about the game it, it, it nobody that is it still playing pokemon sword and shield and is enjoying pokemon sword and shield gives a crap about the tree textures or anything else the game looks like a pokemon game and i'm not mad at that in battles it looks good i appreciate how the animations look in game all in all sword and shield is a fantastic game but that is going to be it for this video i'd love to hear your guys thoughts in the comments below what's your tier listing put it in the discord go share an image of it in the discord of your own tier listing i will link this tier maker in the description below so you guys can do it for yourself if you're interested but like i said that's it for this one if you enjoyed the video found it to be entertaining make sure you leave a like and smash the subscribe button for more videos like this in the future 
be sure to check out the discord like i said people over there playing pokemon all the time and check me out on twitch tiktok and all my other social medias if you're interested in keeping up with me this channel the stream or anything like that but like i said that's it hope to see you all in the next video